Anyway, all right. Because there is there is prayer. Amen. Remember, I talked about say and pray. You say and your prayer got to match. Amen. And then there's another level of prayer called praying in the Holy Ghost. So praying in tongues. Everybody say tongues, because there's more than one. Your tongue becomes many tongues in your mouth. All right. So we'll be talking about that tonight. All right. How's it looking? I know I'm looking good, but... Oh, thank you, Marcy. All right. Calm down. Tame that. Remember, I got face for radio. All right. All right. We're going live. Amen. All right. So we're going to try and see if that fires up, because uh, how many of you like looking at what we write here? One, two, three, all right. And the rest of you just here for lonely nights. <laughs> you were killing time to Guy Hoggy come on at 9.15. Okay. All right, hang on. What, no more? Allah's. Allah's bull Allah's. Otherwise, we're going to have to run copy for everybody. So, oh, watch how fast this thing comes on. Okay, 10 tips on prayer. Amen. You all taking notes tonight? Uh, how many of you are baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? And if you say no, we're going to do that tonight. Amen. So there's a few of you. Some of you um, have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You started to pray in tongues and then you feel like it left you. Well, the Bible says that he, he shall never leave you nor forsake you. So the, the, the thing is, it's like exercising. How many of you exercise? I'm looking at a room full of people that taking a break from exercising. Long time already. In fact, if I say the word exercise, you look at me like, why are you swearing at me for? Anyway. <laughs> now, your spirit man has to exercise. And um, yeah, you, you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. If you get baptized in the Holy Spirit... Tongues is the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then you need to exercise that muscle, which is the spiritual muscle. And you need to start praying in tongues. So all it is is you're letting the Holy Spirit use your vocal cords. And he is only going to allow himself to do what you allow. Amen. So God is going to empower the Holy Spirit because it is the Spirit of God. It is God. He's going to use your vocal cords to pray into the atmosphere things that he needs to be accomplished here on the earth. And hallelujah. I would say less than 2% of Christians worldwide pray in the Holy Ghost. Because a lot of them think it's the devil. Oh, it must be the devil. Yeah, okay, yeah, the devil prays. <laughs> right, so anybody that says that, oh, it's the devil. I mean, you know, that they're full of something. Probably the devil. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And that's a lot of Christians, you know. They don't believe in that. They don't want it. It's anything that a Christian can't explain, he's already going to say that that's hyper-spiritual and that's kind of weird. But praying in the Holy Ghost, I know one fact. When my son, I started this journey, my son was three years old, uh, almost to the day, because I got saved for the last time, March 5th. His birthday is March 15th. So he turned three, ten days after I began my journey. So... After I got baptized in the Holy Spirit in April of 2005, my son, oh, 1995, sorry, April of 1995, my son turned three the previous month. And I prayed with him to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. For, so from three years old, he was praying in tongues. So you can't tell me that you 103 and you no can. Hallelujah. So we, you know, whenever I would get sick and stuff, I would tell him, pray in tongues and lay hands on me. And he would pray, and I would get healed instantly. And I'd be like, this guy get the gift. And now, because of uh, Christians who, um, yeah, let's just say it in not so nice, my son does not uh, exercise in his gift, so he can get lickings any day now. Because he was packing some punches that he could have used for many years. But right now, you know, one thing about him, the anointing never leaves you. So wherever he's at, and he ministers to people in ways that uh, I guess he feels necessary, they, they really love him, and he gets things done. So he's highly favored, and so should you be. 
Amen. How you know that God will pass over a million people to get to the people who have faith? All right. A lot of Christians say that. It's based in the Bible. But God will pass over a million men to get to one person who he feels is walking by faith. So if, if you feel like your life is not really going the way it should, then there's some things that you can do. And tonight is one of them. Yeah? Praying is one important aspect. All right. So uh, how many you know that? I'm just going to touch on the notes that I have. And you can take your own notes. But prayer really simply is just talking story with God. That's it. Talking story with God, and God's not far away. So when you hear Christians who are in prayer saying, Father God, in Jesus, how I many you know that they think God is wearing hearing aids? Well, why would you yell to God when you're seated in Jesus in heavenly places already? So basically, prayer is just communication, talking story with God. Amen? All right, so how many of you pray? With, pray? You try and pray every day. I'm going to use the word try very loosely because everybody can. Try is that word where you know that 99.9% .9 of the time you're not trying. So you use the word try. Amen. All right. So talking story with God is, does not involve any formalities. Jesus left you a model before he left. He said, pray to the Father in my name. All right, so like I call that, I call that the sandwich. Um, your sandwich is you got two pieces of bread, Father God, and in Jesus' name. What you put between the bread is up to you. Because I don't think too many people are just eating two slices of bread and calling that a sandwich. Because something wrong with you. At least mayonnaise or butter or something in there. At least something you got to put in the sandwich to call it a sandwich. Otherwise, it's just bread. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so bread is bread, amen. Jesus is the bread of life, yeah. All right, I can go on and on, right? So I want to try and keep this as simple as possible because there's a lot of people that want to give you um, this formula for prayer, but Jesus left you the formula. He said, pray to the Father in my name. How much easier can that be? Father God, in Jesus' name, and then you just fill in the blanks. And whatever it is that you desire, right, you say, I mean, you know, in John 14 and 15, it talked about the model of prayer. It was... Whatever you say, you will have. And whatever you pray, you will have. So your sayer and your prayer got a match. Right? All right, they're getting close. Hallelujah. So how many know that there are prayers that you pray without the former, uh, formal posture or the formal formula that you just say things like, Oh my God, I'm so stupid. Amen. How many know that all of the demonic realm is going to agree with you? And they're going to see to it. So <laughs> you say and you pray, you got to match. Amen. So there you have it. I mean, you're going to try and take a picture of that. Kind of light tonight. I don't know how come the bulb going or what. All right. So like I said, prayer is simply having a conversation. We call it in Hawaii, talk story. Yeah. How I many of you tell somebody, we need to talk? That's uh, basically a lot of Christians do that same thing with God. They say, Lord, we need to have a talk here. We need to have an understanding. And God is like, <laughs> who are you to address him like that? Amen. Because if he's the king of kings, I mean, you know, that whatever you say, you're going to have anyway. Because it's a royal decree. Whatever you say, you're going to have. Whether you like it or not. So if you say, oh, I'm so stupid. Well, w your wish is my command, saith the devil. Yeah, that's an easy one. Yeah. Oh, I always get the red light. Hallelujah. The enemy will see to it that you will have every red light. Okay? And then you wonder why you get every red light. It's because you say those things, right? Or if you say, I'm always broke. Well, you don't clarify what's broke. I mean, you know that you're, in Hawaii, we call it broke because our, our money, like, escapes us. So we call ourselves broke. I mean, you know that the enemy... Is very, very loose with your definition. So he will take your definition of broke and he will break your back in healing or whatever. Or he'll break your mind. He will use that term very loosely. So you really got to be a professional at your word structure. You really need to be a person that clarifies things so that the enemy cannot get to you. Oh, well, how's it? You all right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you was just walking around like on homeless guy. <laughs> she was just walking. Like, huh? I pull up and park in my stall. Young guy with his smoking cigarettes. I see all his backpacks on the ground. 
He may be like, what's up? What's up? Anyway, he's just hanging out smoking cigarettes. So much like some of you. Anyway, like wandering. Okay. What? Can? No can. Hot time. So yeah. I hope he took that picture fast because it went. <laughs> All right. Uh, prayer. Uh, I'm going to just read from here. There are many different thoughts on what you should and shouldn't do or say when you pray. Uh, there's a lot of religious people that like to tell you how to pray, right? How many of you have ever been a part of a prayer circle that is a yelling festival? I was. I was a Pentecostal. Uh, they get in a circle and they feel like they got to petition God to the highest of the heavens and they got to scream and yell and they got to curse the devil while they're praying. And it's really hard to curse a devil that was defeated at the cross. So if there's going to be anything that you got to do is you just got to be solid in what you're saying. And you got to be firm in your convictions, right? You just got to say, Lord, this is what we need. Um, you are the God, Jehovah Jireh. You're our provider. You're going to provide everything. So now the first thing, okay, if you're taking notes, 10, 10 things or 10 tips on prayer. Here's the first tip for you, okay? Here's the first tip. Have a place that you pray, okay? My recommendation is your place shouldn't be on your back in bed. That's just good advice. Amen. <laughs> because, you, come on now. <laughs> this is just basic information, right? If you're going to say, well, I pray at night, Pastor. And when I pray, I get myself all comfy. And then I lie down and say, as I lay me down to sleep. And you see, even she agree. <laughs> Yeah, she agreed. As I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Um, let's just put it this way. The Lord really does not like your soul. Because that was what was activated in the garden. Amen. If I die before I wake, I come on, fill it in. I pray. I pray the Lord my soul to tell. You know, the Lord don't want your soul. He wants your spirit. Amen. When you get born again, it's because your spirit got born again. Your soul is just kind of, yeah, your, your enemy is your, really your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's the great enemy of the body of Christ. Amen. Your, your mindset is the one that tries to reason out things. Uh, I do deliverance with people. I tell them, shut out your mind. Don't, don't think of anything. You know what the first thing they do? Pastor, I'm doing this right. Anyway. Calm down, okay? Let your spirit do the, do the work, amen? So, okay, so have a place to pray. Now, you can read that. You may have a quiet room, maybe. But it's working, part of it. That one working, if you can see. A quiet room in your house that you can use to pray. You can find solace in your car in a parking lot, amen? How many of you pray in your parking, in your parking lot prayer? Praise the Lord. And while you're petitioning, hopefully you're not screaming, Father God, in Jesus' name, people walking by like, I see someone who didn't take their medication this morning before they came to work. Yeah. So if you're going to do that, make sure you have dark tint on your windows. Yeah. Here's good advice. Sit in the back seat of your car because the windows in the back are darker than the front. So if they hear a voice, they're going to hear, they're going to think God is talking to them. Okay. okay, so wherever you pray, try to be consistent. It certainly doesn't matter to God if you lock yourself in a bathroom or a broom closet, but it will help you. To focus on your prayer time when you have a consistent time and place to pray. Is that good advice? Yeah, consistency is the key when you pray. Because if you get into a habit of it, you know, uh, Hawaiians, they have a habit of drinking fruit punch. When they eat old passion, aren't they? Oh, drink, you know, <laughs> Mac salad. I mean, in your prayer, you need to be consistent in your meeting times and places with God. Because God likes people who show up. Same like church. Amen? Yeah. You know that this church exists because of you. Amen? So make this a consistent place of prayer. Worship is an important component, right? I just taught you about standing and worship, lifting your hands to the Lord like a little baby. Because God likes that. He likes people who plug in. If you're going to use your two hands, plug into God. I mean, you know, He likes that. Amen? It just shows Him that you're all in. Now, if you're a person that sits, like, just sitting out here, just looking at the worshipers, like, 
Hakam şey befot. How come they do this thing with their hands? How, oh, you know, some people like to think, oh, I can sing better than that. Plenty of room up here. I, I go to a lot of churches and I minister. People, a lot of people come up to the altar and worship with the worshipers. Or they lie prostrate in front. Um, this is different. You know, you can, this is a house of freedom. So if you're looking at, oh, shame, I feel like I should go up there, but, oh, shame. You know, like babies, they have no shame. Think about it. Okay? You're a baby in the eyes of God. Should you have any shame? No. So you just worship the Lord. Worship and prayer are hand in hand. So when you are praying, I mean, you know, you're not just having a conversation. You're, you're worshiping the Lord in that time. Okay? So let's move that up so everybody can see because um, some all these guys on this side cannot see right now. <laughs> All right, I don't know if she heard me. Let's move that up to the, slide that up if we can. Hang on. Oh, she had them frozen. I'll slide. All right, pray without ceasing means to always be in an attitude of prayer or to be aware that God is with you at every moment that you have a conversation. You can have a conversation with him anytime. How do you know that you can have a conversation with God under your breath? Anytime. Right? Uh, how many of you mutter under your breath when people talking to you like, oh, you stupid, so dumb. How many of you can talk to God too while people talk to you? Man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well. You know, any one of these associate pastors here can, can get up here and teach this because they've been experiencing this for many years. Amen. You, uh, how many of you pray only when you have to or need to? <laughs> That's another. You know, you, you need to pray every day. You need to have a time where you, you, you communicate with God. The word communication has the word commune. And that's also the root word of communion. Communication, communion, and commune are all the same word. It's just a different emphasis. So anytime you communicate with God, you're having communion with Him. You're communing with God. Commingling union. You guys know what that means? You're commingling and you're having a union with God at the same time. It's like a big power, like a meeting with God. And you're just talking to God about what's important to God. Let's not make the error, error of telling God what's important to us. Because he's going to say, okay, you spoiled ratchet. All you do is talk about yourself. I mean, you know that you are there for others. Your stuff, because Philippians says that God knows all of your need. And he will provide all of your need according to his riches and glory. So the thing is, in, in prayer, you're there for others. Amen. So always address God. God knows what you need, so just pray that you, you're hearing God for other people. Amen. All right. Second tip is this. Scheduling a time. Whatever time that is. So I know all of you busy. Here's the thing. Go sleep a little bit earlier so you can wake up a little bit earlier. Yeah. People always tell me that, oh, Pastor, I don't want time. Well, how we know that when your prayer is not getting answered, maybe God no more time for you. No. He, yeah. <laughs> Remember, what, it, what you sow is what you're going to reap. So, amen. So don't say you don't have time because when you make that known, I don't have time, how you know that God will pass you by and use somebody else. And you cannot get jealous when other people get used. Amen. Because you got to check your track record. Are you really available? Amen. Now, this, mind you, this is all about saying and praying. Okay, we're not even touching on praying in the Holy Ghost yet, which is what I kind of started off with. Now, the Bible says to pray without ceasing, and that's found in First Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Now, how many of you get really grouchy all the time? Yeah. Amen. If you're willing to admit it, then God is willing to help you with that. I mean, you know that if you pray in the morning and you get grouchy in the afternoon, maybe you should pray in the morning and in the afternoon. <laughs> Amen. You know why you get grouchy later in the afternoon? I'll give you the answer. Because all your prayers in the morning got answered. So God is bringing you other issues throughout the day. And you're getting grouchy because you're carrying everybody's burdens at that point. Amen. And there it is. Look at that. Simple verse. First Thessalonians, what was it? 5, 
17. Look how three words in the verse. What does it say? Pray without ceasing. Oh, wait, not you. Ceasing. Like this. <laughs> so you pray without her. You pray on your own. No, nah, anyway, I just pray without ceasing means you are always in that. But here's the thing. If you're going to pray in English without ceasing, it's going to wear out your mind. You're going to get tired. So you're going to have to there's, uh, hang on. We're going to get to the praying in the Holy Ghost part, praying in tongues. Really simple. You know, I, man, when I was a brand new Pentecostal Christian, they would say, we have to import into you. You're going to get better. And I'd be like, oh, my God. It's like I'm getting hit with a fire sledgehammer or something. Because they would all come and hit me in the chest. And like, come on, take it, take it. You got to pray no more. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Bro? They put me in a prayer circle. They would all lay hands on me. Fire, 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 fire. I'm like, what the heck? Like, I would smell breath. I never wanted to smell. It's like i too intimate, you guys. Yeah. Hallelujah. And believe it or not, this model of prayer still exists. These people are still out there praying. Fire, fire. You, you know what you do when you do that kind of thing? You elevate the soulish realm more than you do the spiritual realm. Because the people are thinking, what's wrong with me? That they're trying to burn me out. Fire, 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 fire. fire. Take it, take it, take it. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> When I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, it was this guy. His name was Eric. Uh, Eric was a, he was a different guy. Him and his wife, his wife was really different. But he invited me to his house for dinner, and I went there, and she said, I was soaking this lamb for seven days in wine. I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. But then she roasted it, and we ate it, and she said, because Jesus is the Lamb of God. And, I was, and she said, the wine represents the blood. So we were marinating Jesus in the blood. And I was thinking, okay. Now, you fast forward, this is like 21 years later, I'm thinking, that was really bizarre. Really. But it tasted okay. And then they prayed for us, and she, they laid hands and said, Oh, Lord. And this had me, you know, they, they did it different than I do it. And I was on the ground. I woke up. What the heck happened? I didn't even feel myself fall. And it was a wooden floor. I was standing one minute. Okay, I'll take it, Lord, whatever. And then I woke up and I was like, that was half an hour later. I was like, how did I get on this floor? And who drugged me with that lamp? Well, what happened is I got up and they said, let's pray. And then we were praying. I started praying in this language. I couldn't understand. And the rest is history. I still do it. My formula is a little different than I do. And I'm going to teach you uh, how to do it. I'm going to do it with you. And then you're going to be a person that's going to be able to do it with everybody. Because we need to be the church that sets the city on fire peacefully. Not like, fuck and come with your shogun sword and cut them into pieces. Like, rah, 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 and like, okay, we don't want to be that weirdness. Okay? So pray without ceasing. I mean, you can pray in the Holy Ghost without ceasing. That's really easy because it's the Holy Spirit using your vocal cords. So it involves none of your mind. It involves no burdens because the perfect will of God is prayed through you in the Holy Ghost. And you're all good. Now, Casey over here. Casey, raise your hands. Wave your hand. I got to pray with her uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, she got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and she's been going. And every day she texts me, am I doing it right? Anyway, that's good. That's good because she's concerned if she's doing it correctly. And let me tell you, if you're praying in the Holy Ghost and you don't know what you're praying, you're doing it right. Because it involves none of your brain cells. Uh, how many of you, the rest of you, pray in the Holy Ghost and... You don't know what you're praying. That's, you are doing it 100%. But here, here's the other part of it. You can always ask the Lord for the interpretation of what you're praying in the Holy Ghost. And he'll show you, not so you come over and say, well, guess what the Lord is using me to pray for? Oh, my God. Now you're doing it wrong. All right. All right. No pride. I can tell you right now, the word is true. In, in the Old Testament, it says, pride goeth before destruction. Okay, destruction. You guys know what destruction is? Something is going to be destroyed in your life. That's destruction. 
right? And God is in the process right now in this season, I can tell you right now, to ruin a lot of people's pride. Why? Because he wants the church to get back to a base level. A base level. Uh, how do I know? Because every day I get texts, calls, messages. I get Facebook messages. People are trying to communicate with me. I just got invited to London, England. They wanted me to go June 16th to the 19th. Get this now. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, what do you think about this invitation? It's a church in London. They invited me. And how I many you know that sometimes the bait comes? This, this is what they said in the email. <laughs> we are ready to compensate you. We will be sending you a deposit for $5,500 as your honorarium. Another 30, I think it was 3,500 will be presented to you upon your final night. Uh, we will give you the rest of the check. We will provide you first class airfare, a hotel of your choice, and ground transportation. They will come and pick me up. I mean, you know, that's, most people would say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. As I prayed in the Holy Ghost, the Lord says, no, you're not going. And I was like, but Lord. <laughs> And I said, you sure? He said, that's my name, but no. I said, Lord, that's, that's good money. You know, I don't have, they're paying everything. I show up. They're going to send me 5500 as an earnest deposit. He said, no, you're not going. I said, okay. And I, upon praying, I started to see some things in the spirit. And the Lord says, there's something going to happen in that city, in that area at the time you're going to be there. You're supposed to be there. And I said, and the Lord says, to avert that, I'd rather you be here at home praying than be there having to pray. And the Lord says, I can avert that whole situation if you'll get your church to pray. Instead of going there to minister, you will be preparing ministry in that area before you even go. So... I don't know what big thing was uh, going to break for it. So all I did was started to pray in the morning, just started to pray and say, Lord, I cover that city. I cover that area in Jesus' name. You guys know that in Paris, a lot of things happen. Oh, you know that these people are relentless. They're, they're just going to start to try and hit places randomly. And, you know, London is always a big attack because they're a very free nation, much like the United States. So as a church, right from here, we can pray against something there and and, and be and these things i i know one thing when the lord tells me something he's never wrong amen i saw the twin towers go down years before it happened three years before the twin towers went down the lord showed me an open vision of that in prayer he actually took me there and i everything you see on the news i was physically there at the time but it was three years before and the the earthquakes in uh, Southeast Asia and Thailand. I remember I went there seven years before it happened. I was there. And all of the destruction after the tidal waves. So God doesn't make those kind of errors. And if you want those kind of out of body kind of things, uh, I told my former pastor, and he told me, it's not an out of body, th body thing. You're just out of your mind. Wow. So he meant it, meant it sarcastically. I took it, that's a good thing that I'm not praying in my mind. So he wasn't wrong. He was just less informed. Amen. So whatever is going to happen, I had to forego that. So I'm going to rely on all of you to give me. Some of you laughing. Why? <laughs> you pray in the Holy Ghost. The Lord will tell you what to do. Amen. So tonight we're going to accomplish that. And some of you are like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I don't like, I don't like. Shut your face. Amen. If you don't like, you don't like. God will never give you anything you don't want. But when you ask for something you do want, you better make sure you're doing God's will. Otherwise, you're not going to get that either. Yeah, no cry. No cry. So what does it say? You guys remember, right? First Thessalonians 5.17. Pray without ceasing. The only way you're going to do that is by praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, let me recap that for you. Because if you pray without ceasing in English and using your mind, You'll be worn out. A lot of you are being approached by different people for ministry. You're being touched upon uh, by people who are giving you real issues. They call you first. Why do they call you first? I can tell you because God can use you. And God knows that you want to be used. That's why God uses you. 
You don't think God is going to... Or some people like to say, oh man, I don't know why they call him. Maybe I don't know more the gifts. Yeah, you do. That's why God is presenting an opportunity for you. And you're like, oh, I don't know. I... If you're using your head for these issues, you know already you... Let's just call it what it is. You dumb. Okay. <laughs> You're in a church of opportunity. You will always be presented with opportunities for ministry. Okay? And you cannot shy away and say, Oh, I, oh I hear my pastor's number. Like, you can do that. And I will go. But the thing is, you lost out on an opportunity to show how great God is in your life. Yeah, it's easy to pass it on to me. Yeah, I'll go do it, whatever. But I mean, if God wants to use you. You want a big blessing in your life. God wants to use you here to get to that blessing. You can't get to that blessing until you accomplish this. Because he's trying to pay you for different things he can trust you with. All right, there's other things there. What is verse 16? Yeah, so how often should you rejoice? How, how often should you be grouchy then? If you rejoice always, you know more room for be grouchy. You don't have time to be grouchy because you're always rejoicing. And rejoicing is the act of operating in joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. And joy can't be found in Walmart except in the detergent section. For <laughs> so if you want that kind of joy, you can go buy that kind of joy. But that's not what he's talking about. It's operating in the strength of the Lord. If the joy of the Lord is your strength, you are operating in God's strength that he gives to you. All right, so I know, ladies, you get PMS, you get post-MS, you get your period. Three weeks out of the month, out of four weeks, you all bust up. But you still have to rejoice always. Don't be one of these like, oh, don't you even come around me. This is, you know what week this is? Fire, fire, fire. Anyway. <laughs> You're dragging us in the fire. Some people tell me, well, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm the royal bee. Okay, beloved. Okay, yeah, we're all part of the beloved of God. Amen. And look at 18. In between this sandwich, rejoicing, praying, and then 18 is what? In everything, give thanks. Okay, how much thanks should you be, should you be giving? <laughs> For everything. Oh, you don't understand. They're giving me rash. Give thanks. That's why the Lord chose you to get the rash. Amen. Yeah, amen. When you said I do, it never say when I like. <laughs> amen. This is good stuff, you know. Eh? It says this, eh? rejoice, pray, and give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That is God's will. You want to know what God's secret formula is? Is that rejoicing, praying, give thanks. That's the will of God. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Remember I teach you guys, right? Whenever you see things written in threes, the third of the three is the greatest because it's the Holy Ghost. In everything, give thanks. Amen. So what shouldn't you give thanks for? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever is presented to you, give thanks. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this situation. Uh, you will show yourself strong on my behalf. That's it. All right. I, I go through stuff and I am going through stuff. Here's the thing. I just got to give thanks. Thank you, Lord, for presenting this, even if it could be evil. You presented this opportunity for me to be victorious and successful. I got I to gotta produce the results that you have taught and given to me. All right. And whether I like it or not. It was, it's been chosen to visit my door. So either I answer the door, okay? How many know that you can answer a door any possible way? If a, let's say a good person comes up to you, they're holding a nice handbag, they have a flower dress, high heels, and an umbrella with watchtowers. <laughs> right? Can you answer the door? Yeah, yeah. Or, or can you act like you're not home? With the TV on, the lights all on, food boiling on the stove, hide. <laughs> or can you open the door and say, Jesus is Lord, hallelujah. 
Because they don't believe in Jesus. He said, Jesus is my Lord. Can I introduce you to my Lord? Watch how fast their shoes left behind and the umbrella. And they're gone. Right? I saw that before. You know, kids playing basketball. Jehovah Witnesses walking down the street, shooting baskets. All of a sudden, get in the house. They're coming. The ball's still bouncing. They're all in the house hiding behind a curtain. <laughs> what good is that? They saw you from down the road. Oh. You know how hard it is to hide behind a curtain? They still heal. They see your eye. <laughs> yeah. What if a burglar is a, or a robber was at your door? Hallelujah! Jesus is. Uh, <laughs> give me a wallet. Well, you got to understand that things are presented to you. You got to be smart too. All right, be smart in what you do. God is very strategic in what he does. Amen. You guys all smart? Pray in the Holy Ghost, you will avert a lot of problems in life. Amen. Because your spirit takes care of all of the physical and mental problems in this life. Financial, relational, all of these things are covered by the spiritual realm. So if you are a person that exercises your spiritual gifts in prayer, how I mean, you know that most of the things in life will escape you? And the things that do visit you, no problem, I got it. Right? Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to show yourself strong on my behalf. We get, we get them. Right, Lord? Don't say this. Lord, get them. <laughs> God is not a dog you sick on your problems. Okay? Get them, Jesus. Get them. You, I hear this a lot in churches that I preach in. You know, they say, because I hear them pray, and they're, and they're praying and say, And hey, Lord, the devil, get him, Jesus, get him, Jesus. Like, oh, my God. They're treating Jesus like he's a Doberman or a pit bull. Like, you know what I'm thinking? Brah, enough already. Relax. God is not like that. Remember, situations visit you because you are the victorious one and you can handle it. God will never give you anything you cannot handle. How many of you believe that? Until it happens to you. Then you're like, Lord, I no can handle. Why are you? <laughs> no, you can handle. That's why he brought it to you. All right, all pigeon English. Good. Okay. All right, back to the notes. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. oh. Hang on. Okay. All right. Now you can read all of this, right? And schedule a time. You may find you only need a few minutes. Ten minutes of praying is a long time for someone who has never had a habit of praying. Right? Ten minutes. This is not punishment, guys. Okay. So not like you're not getting grounded. Oh, Pastor said I got to pray. Like, bro, you don't need. I'm not telling you to do anything, right? You don't have to. How many of you love to pray? Especially when you're going through something. Then when you're not going through something, eh, eh, go pray a little while. Yeah. Oh, the Lord not calling me to pray today. <laughs> you bula you. All right. All right, so you can make an appointment with God on your daily calendar. Keep that appointment just as you would with anyone else on your agenda. Because you have appointments, everybody. If you, don't, if you say you don't have appointments, then, uh, then you're really like bumming it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next one. Let's slide all the way down there. Prayer list. Well, you know, you can make a prayer list. Uh, when I first started my journey, I used to have a list of things that I would... Now, remember now, anything you have on your prayer list has to have a start date and an end date. Okay? Because remember, much like uh, anything in life, okay, in the, your spiritual life, you sow to what you want to reap from. So your prayer list should be also your need list. We have offering envelopes. They say seed and need. So prayer is the same thing. Prayer is seed for a need someplace. Right? So you have to have a start date and an end date. So when you start something, you do want the prayer answered, right? Or you just one of those guys throwing Pippa airplanes off the roof. I hope it hits its destination. Yeah, right. Or throwing darts in the wind. Yeah, this is not pin the tail on the donkey. Yeah, we're not guessing. We're not gambling. We're not hoping. There is an end or a exit strategy to every prayer you pray. It has to get answered, right? Otherwise, why are you praying? 
You cannot say, Lord, if it be your will. Now, let me just ask you this. How many ever heard or heard that prayer before? Lord, if it be your will, please grant this petition. Johnny Bubbles and Mary Banana. You cannot pray like that because God's will, we said it earlier, is your will. Rejoice, pray, and give thanks. So any prayer you have, God is wanting to be rejoiced. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Remember the second one we said, pray without ceasing. Jesus taught you to pray. Amen. And give thanks. The Holy Spirit will help you to be on the receiving end of any prayer. Any prayer. But remember, you cannot only pray for yourself. Okay, you all got that? Because you should rely on the faith of the saints worldwide to pray for you. And that's how it all works. Amen. Now you can say, Lord, hey, I'm praying for these guys. Lord, you like slime me one extra one mile away. Hallelujah. The Lord will take care of you too. Amen. You don't have to worry. All right. Now you can read all of that. Create a list, prayer journal. You can note specific prayer requests. Don't trust your memory. Amen. Because most of you wondering what you had for breakfast today. If I ask you what you had for lunch, you got to think, most of you. Especially when you start passing 40 and 50. Yeah. All right. Different, re you can do it all kind of ways. Request, list that you pray on various days. You can, you can do anything you want. There's no rules to it, okay? Some churches make rules. Now, fasting is one of those things. You can fast. There's no, hey, if you want to fast, go for it, amen? Some people, if you go on a 40-day fast, you really got to have a lot of time on your hands. Because let me tell you, you know, a lot of, I, I know some guys, one of my classmates, he works for Campus Crusade for Christ. Uh, he leads a lot of 40-day prayer fasts. And then he says, yeah, we were only drinking juice. But that's not one fast. A fast is a fast from everything, right? When Jesus went on his fast, think about it, go read. What did he eat or drink? You got to really be able to better park in the ER parking lot, just in case. I know every time I try to fast, I don't have the gift of fasting. Every time I try to fast, Burger King puts one of those commercials on TV and fire coming off the hamburger. That is my weakness. I can tell you right now, as soon as I see that, I say, Lord, I, I hear you. Hallelujah. <laughs> A lot of Christians say it's the devil, but... I look at a flame broiling hamburger as a blessing of God because God loves the fat. In the Old Testament, remember, they would have to burn the fat. How I many know the Lord likes the fat? And so do I. So as soon as I see that commercial, thank you, Lord, for ending my fast. I ain't stupid, man. Hallelujah. And every time I go on a fast and somebody says, oh, you fasting? I was going to buy you lunch. The fast is over. I cannot refuse a blessing. Let's go. Because remember, if you're punishing yourself in a fast, how many know that that's not, that's not God? God wouldn't punish you. And God ain't a slave driver. You know, amen. Yeah. So if you want to fast, start with one meal. Lord, I'm going to fast breakfast today. Wait, it's a break to fast. I better eat the breakfast. All right. <laughs> You see, from the first time, you all boss up already. But there are some people that do have that gift. Yeah, they, but you cannot do it. You know, even the Bible says, don't make yourself known that you're fasting. Because some you know that some people go on a fast and they tell everybody, I can't eat today, hallelujah, because I'm fasting, you know. And that's when I start eating the sandwich right in front of them. For real. God bless you. Ooh, baga ono, me. I'm the greatest punk you ever met if you're on a fast. Oh, I was just going to take you heal Hawaiian tonight. Son of a God. He goes, you fasting, God blessed me with this amount of money. I was going to take you. But since you fast, I'll take somebody else. Watch how fast you break that. Like, I can resume it tomorrow. They always say that. Nah, I can, I can start all over tomorrow. Yeah, it's like your homework, yeah? 
Right before class, you turn the door real fast. <laughs> All right, so you create a prayer list, and then you use a prayer list. Okay, let's slide up a prayer guide. Short list of reminders of what types of things you should pray for. Now, what are some of the things you, you can pray for? Well, here's some examples, right? Salvation. Can you pray for salvation for people? Yeah. How about protection? Yeah. How about leadership? Yeah, you can pray, pray for ministry opportunities. We said that earlier. How about deliverance from temptation? Yeah. How I many of you get tempted real easily with stuff? Because in counseling, I always ask people, so how was your week? Oh, Pastor. Oh, my God. I got bossed up because uh, these guys didn't ask me for go someplace. And I should have not went, but I went anyway. And this is what happened. And when I went there, and then I got blah, 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 blah. Okay, calm down. Mm. I know these people. Like, I get this a lot from men, okay? And this is what they come in for. Men are pretty simple to counsel and do ministry with because men are just about food, sex, and shelter. Basically, that's kind of their concern. Because yeah. they're basically basic, right? Basic. And that's what men prefer. Oh, my wife not putting up. Okay, bro. How about you just do some good things for your wife? You know I mean? And they're like, oh, that's good, a good idea. Anyway, this is the number one prayer request I get for men. Gout. Gout, number one. Why? Because they know they're not supposed to eat them, but they eat them anyway. Deliver me from temptation. Oh, Pastor, you don't know. You don't understand. Smoke meat. My friend was making smoke meat. We had to sample. Sample doesn't mean like, yeah, five pounds on rice. Yeah. Oh, they know this is another one. I allergic, but I ate the crab anyway. I stay itchy and I no can breathe. Hallelujah. <laughs> Gout and allergy. Allergic reaction to food. That's men. And then it rolls into, I get high blood pressure. I get cholesterol. I get, I don't can feel my feet. Anyway, you can feel your feet because you're fat and you're cutting off your circulation. That's why you're walking around funny. That's kind of what it is, right? So, Delivering from temptation. Ladies, uh, your temptations are a little bit different. Pastor, pray I don't kill him. Okay. <laughs> He's so dumb. I don't can believe. I think when you were dating him, you knew how dumb he was. And then you said, I do. Then you wonder what. I, yeah, you know what I mean. The rest of the story. <laughs> Temptation for ladies a little different, right? They're like, mm. Pastor, pray that I don't go with these certain ladies because they gossip too much. Mm. Remember, gossip with you is a gossip of you. Yeah, so if you know they're gossipers, what should you do? You know that gossip is exaggerated truth, right? Exaggerated. Yeah, I didn't know a little bit of something, and then they blow it up and make you look bad. That's just how ladies are. Amen. I trust no lady with more than 18 bracelets on her arm. I know already. She's going to gossip. Why? Because that's kind of... If you're overcoming poverty, you really want to dress it up. Do you really need the bracelet around your bicep? Anyway. These ones usually have some kind of lip liner problem. You guys know what I mean? The lip liner, they make their lips bigger than supposed to be because they draw the line way outside the lip and they color all the rest in. Because their lips are flapping all day. You, know, you just got to know the people. Yeah? Amen. All right. Now, are they all evil? No. They just have that tendency. Right? Like I told you ladies before, if you're wearing hunting t-shirts all the time, you know, still tall, you got to wonder. Why? Buy him on Aloha shirt. Up his game. Everybody got to up your game. Right now, in this season, everybody got to come up a level. Everybody. Okay. 
All right, missionaries, can you pray for a missionary? Yeah, you should pray that God will give them protection. I hear this all the time. Missionaries die on the mission field. It is Maki Dai did. Why? They're like, before they go, it's all, God is calling us to this place. I, I met some guys before. They, God is calling us to South America. And everybody's raising money. And these guys went, and then they said, God had blessed us with this airplane. It was free. That two things don't go together very well in my book, free airplane. And this is what happened. The free airplane, so they had problems. The thing crashed. They all died. So I'm kind of leery of that kind of thing, right? So, you know, these people, they really need extra prayer. You need to... I, I, one time I met this missionary. He was missing a leg. I said, how come you're missing a leg? He says, well, we were in Africa, and we were going, and the car broke down. It had no, it, well, they said ran out of gas and a flat tire. So they walked to go get help, and then a lion came and ate his leg. I think you needed more prayer at that time. Yeah, so, you know, these things that you got to pray for, right? Now, that's the extreme, right? Some people say, well, they shouldn't have gone. Was that God's will to go? Well, maybe, but they just didn't have the prayer covering, maybe. Yeah. So what are you praying for? Are you praying for missionaries around the world? You know, not the ones that wear white shirts with a black name tag and a tie on, riding a bicycle around Hilo, different kind of missionary. You know what I mean? Just telling you guys, I can rip on everybody. But here's the thing: we need to pray for those that are re really reaching people for the gospel. Sure. You gotta pray. You gotta cover them. Amen. All right, make your own guide. Now let's slide up again. Amen. We're gonna move this up. I'm just kind of skimming through these ten things. Targeted prayer. Let me know that you can pinpoint prayer to a target. Pray for a request on your list and try to avoid general prayers. God already knows about all the missionaries in the world. But you, you know, you got to target some of them if you're supporting them. Don't just pray for God to bless them all. All right? Hallelujah. Pray for their specific needs. Now, missionaries have a basic need of money, food, shelter. Yeah? I know Ken and Gigi, Ken, he, he comes when he's not working. You guys know Ken because he always sit by the speaker. You know, Ken, he is so good. But yeah. they love Africa. He told me, man, I miss, I miss it every single day. He would like to go back. And yeah, Gigi too. And so I told him, whenever you're ready, let us know. We'll help you raise spam money. Man, I don't know. You, you can always put a can spam in your purse or your pocket, huh? Well, these guys have other needs too because they really go out in the bush and they live there long term. How many of you have that calling on your life? Yeah, I can tell nobody. Yeah. For me, I can tell you right now, I don't have that calling. To sleep under the stars? Or if I hear... <laughs> I start thinking. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is it a lion or a bear? Or an... <laughs> I'm this kind of guy. Yeah, even hunting is not my thing. Yeah, hunting. Yeah, some of you like hunting, not me. I remember my uncle guys came from the mainland one time. They said, hey, you get some guys can take us hunting. I said, yeah. They said, and you can come with us. I was like, no. He said, no, you got to come. Come on. I went with them. And my uncle guys, I thought like, okay, these guys like hunting. He, he said, oh, yeah, I went on safari in Africa. And I was like, okay, so you guys are professional hunters. Not knowing that when you go Kulani Forest, a little bit different kind of hunting. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get lava rocks covered with vines and trees and all that, hapu, right? So we're out there, and I was like, oh, my God, why am I here? I hate this. Even when we're golfing, I don't like look for my golf ball. <laughs> and I'm looking for one pig that could attack me. Why do I? I'm not. We're over there and, you know, it was my former brother-in-law. He brought all these hunting dogs. And the dogs run, yeah, like, and they go, and then you listen for the bark. The long bark. So we, and we don't hear nothing. And, yeah, so my uncle's like, hey, I hear something. And we're like, oh, my God. And then my uncle's like. Oh, my God, a pig. And he ran and he jumped on one hapu who was two feet high. <laughs> Professional hunter. I step off the path and I stand behind a tree because I'm going to play. 
yeah, come. You like play tag with me with your task or whatever. He ran by and I was like, that's my brother-in-law's big black dog. And my uncle was still holding a tree and he was thinking, <laughs> yeah, I knew that was a dog. I was just tricking you guys. Yeah, right. Yeah. He said, I got to go bathroom. Hang on. Yeah, right. See, that's not my game. You know what I mean? It, to be a missionary, forget it. If I was in some of, I got invited to India, and this is a running joke. I went, I got invited to India, and I thought about it, and I thought long, and I prayed. And when I said, Lord, do you want me to go to India and do some ministry? This is what I heard. <laughs> and I said, Lord, you sure? <laughs> I said, Why, Lord? He says, Because you like meat. And I said, okay, I better go study up on India. And I got that straight from the Lord. You like meat. I went and I started researching India, and it's like, there's no meat. What? They don't eat their cousin, their uncle, and their auntie, and their brother. And that's all reincarnated. The animals are reincarnated humans, in their opinion. So they worship the animals. So I was like, what? And the Lord says, can you see yourself trying to stab a cow running down the street? No, I can't. Stay home then. <laughs> See, I have this relationship with the Lord. Right? He's very real with me. Amen. How many of you like that kind of relationship? You're not wondering, oh, I wonder if I should go. Oh, yes, Lord, I'll go to London for $9,000 and then get blown up in the subway. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, where the 9000 going to be? One of you going to be running. Oh, bury him with that. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> That's the reality of it, right? Remember, you're just one step away from everybody spending and using all your stuff. Right. Yeah, one step away. I know, because I met this guy one time. He was a really arrogant guy. One day he tripped on a sidewalk, hit his head, he died. Yeah, that's all it takes. You're one step away, bro. Okay. Okay, so God knows the needs. He wants us to acknowledge that we're concerned about those individual requests too. Okay, next page. Take notes. Why? Read it. Have you ever been distracted while praying? It's like in church. I know already when I'm talking. See, somebody asked me, how come you tell so many funny stories? Because people lack focus. If I don't tell a funny story, if I only talk Bible, everybody's checked out. Some of you in your mind, you're at the beach. Your eyes open, but you ain't here. You know how I know? Because I was you. I used to be in church and my pastor would be like, and then by faith, we walk by faith. And now by, by, by that moment, I'm thinking, I oh, wonder no, what the special at Cafe on Andre today. <laughs> Wait, no. Braised beef with no, no. No, that's Monday. Uh, start thinking, you know, like, and he's over there spitting and ranting and yelling at the devil. And I'm over there. So tomorrow, after I take the kids to school, I wonder if I should go golf. Yeah, I can go golf. Hallelujah. Because he's looking at me now. Rah, rah, right now. Hallelujah. And then after that, I think I'm going to go cage driving and eat one now. Pocket and peas. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Everything was about food back in those days. I was huge. Amen. How many of you were like that? How many of you are like that? Where are you right now? You see? So take notes, right? You pray and you can't remember or something. You got to just jot things down. Just be a person that jots things down. Do you have a booklet when you come to church? I know a lot of you, you make believe. You get your phone. You're over there. Hallelujah. <laughs> like, 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 like. <laughs> You're so dumb. Anyway, like. Like, ooh, I don't like that one. That's about protesting. No. Next. Like, yeah, man, pastor. Hallelujah. Like, like. <laughs> Some people like doing that stuff, right? They act like they're studying the Bible. They have the Bible app open, so if I was to look over, they're like, oh, Bible, Bible, Bible. <laughs> when they're not liking, they do them, the Bible. <laughs> what? Who wanted that? Okay, so take notes. You guys can take notes. 
Not mental notes, because your mental faculties, you know what I mean. Eh? I don't know. Somebody was telling me, you got to take ginkgo. Ginkgo? Ginkgo biloba. I was like, if I don't know what that tree look like, I'm not going to take them. I, mean, I had a hard time when uh, my ex's grandma said, oh, you, you get diarrhea, you got to go get guava shoot. I had a hard time with that too. Like, Do I trust this old lady who stay in her house all day? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you get the kind of oh, fever rash on your tongue. You got to go behind the state building and go and go get cuckoo in that and rub them all over your tongue. I get a hard time with that. Because <laughs> I saw a homeless guy sleeping under there. One time he was using a bathroom by that tree. Yeah. And the lower air, you put them on the boil. Like, oh, why we're going to put that leaf on my boil? Why are you going to put that tea leaf on my head and walk around like I want Indian? I'm Portuguese Indian. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah. Everybody has a thing, right? So, um, I don't know. You gotta find, I just have a hard time with theories. All, right. All I know is if you take 14 Tylenol, it's the last headache you ever have. <laughs> yeah. People come to me. I had one guy one time, he, he did. He, took, he said, this headache just won't go away. He took eight Tylenol. I said, wow, you better go to the emergency room. He's like, why? I feel good. The headache is kind of, kind of there. I said, man, just go here. He had to stay in the hospital for a week. Yeah. Don't take too much Tylenol. Amen. It's like going to Zippies and eating too many cream puffs. Don't take too many of those. Bring them to me. I help you with that problem. Yeah. No. <laughs> you guys all know my addiction is Cheetos and Munch Bars. That's my thing, yeah. Hallelujah. All right, next one, journal your prayer. You just, again, it's like taking notes. Again, targeting, it's journaling. You just write things down. Get all your prayers answered. You got to have, again, your start date and your end date, right? You begin and your exit. You got to know when your prayers are getting answered for people. Remember, you can pray for Remember, praying for others is your journal. For yourself, it's all about seed. Okay, because seed always determines your answered need. Okay. All right, the next one, slide up. I don't want to spend too much time. You guys kind of get it. You guys are pretty smart, right? Yeah, pretty smart. Yeah. God speak. That's talking to God. Don't make prayer complicated. Oh, God. some people they quote too many scriptures in prayer, like Father God in Jesus' name. You are the God. I am not anxious today. I know you're the God of all my need. You, will. oh my God, just pray simple. Amen. If you go to a McDonald's drive-through and you say, and they say. How can I help you today? And you're like, well, I would like a Big Mac, not too much lettuce, half of the special sauce. Can you leave out the cheese? Can you instead put the filet of fish bun rather than the sesame seed bun? Can you? Oh, in the night you're getting complicated. I would hate to work at Burger King because these must be the most confused people in the world with all, because what is their slogan? Have it your way. Right? So people go in there and you just sit in there and you listen to people order and you like slap them on the back of the head for the girl working at the like, oh my God. <laughs> Can I have a cheeseburger but uh, minus that bun, put this bun, whole wheat, but instead of the burger, can you put fish in there and like order one fish burger, you dummy. I heard that request, and I was like, oh, my God, for real? You like one cheeseburger, but instead of the burger, you like fish. I don't want fish burger. What's wrong with you? Something wrong with you? <laughs> have it your way. How about you have the rest of your brain cells back? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you go to Burger King, you know that's not real onion. It is all chop up onions shaped like an onion ring, and these people say, are those real onions? 
Yes, they're real. They just chopped up and formed into a ring. You like real onion rings? Go jack in a box. Good night. People are just lame. Yeah. You guys know, all right? Now, don't make prayer complicated. There are certainly many things the Bible teaches about prayer. We should pray with respect. We should pray to a loving father. We should pray with sins already forgiven. Otherwise, why are you praying if you think you get sin? You can't accomplish it. We should pray in Jesus' name and according to his will. All of these things are taught in the Bible. Keep these things in mind while praying, but don't complicate prayer. All right, talk with God as if you're having a conversation with a friend. Yes, he is. Read it. The king of kings. Who's the king's part? You. But he's also a caring and loving father. This one here. Pray aloud in the spirit. God will hear you if you pray silently. But praying aloud helps you to stay focused. Amen. Simple, right? It's not going to get God's attention. It's helping you to stay focused. All right. Next. Go all the way down. All right. Find a prayer agreement partner. You guys know what that means? Find somebody who can agree with you. If you're going to pray at a specific time, how about you get somebody to pray at that time too so you can stand in agreement together. Amen? Personal time, okay? Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20. Now, look at this scripture, and I want to teach you something here. Uh, Matthew 18 is real important because Pentecostals live and die by this stuff. Amen. In fact, Pentecostals live and die too much. They should just live. All right. Okay, let's take a look at this scripture. Can we get it sometime this year? No. Okay, right there. All right, this is, remember now, this is before the cross. Okay, so mind you, a lot of people, they like to talk about, oh, uh, right above that, the sinner, if somebody offends you. Okay, that's all Old Testament stuff, okay? Now, if you're going to pray and keep it kind of real, 18... Assuredly, Jesus says, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Okay, is that simple enough? You bind it up, it's bound in heaven. Why? Because you're seated where? In heavenly places. So whatever you disallow is, will be disallowed by God. Whatever you allow will be allowed. That's what binding and loosing is. Loosing is just allowing. Okay? All right. Disallow and allow. Again, I say to you, and here's what Jesus says, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. Go one step further. Upon the finished work of Christ, he's in the midst with you anyway. You don't have to have two or three. But again, it's always good to have an agreement partner. All right? Because two are better than one, the Bible says. You guys know that, right? Two are better than one. Okay, because two can accomplish way more than one person. All right, can you all find an agreement partner? Yeah. If you can't, just say, well, I have three all together in my group, Pastor. Me, myself, and I. Yeah, and you wouldn't be wrong as long as you can get the me, myself, and I to agree. But if your body is in need of something and your spirit is praying something and your mind says, I don't know if that prayer was that, I mean, you get schizophrenia going on. You have multiple personality disorder. So again, assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose. Again, allow and disallow. Okay, if you don't want something to happen, just say it. I don't want this to happen in Jesus' name. I believe, really, that when Jesus went with the disciples into the Garden of Gethsemane, you guys remember Gethsemane? He had all of his disciples, you know, he had a few of them there, and he asked them one key question. What did he say? Will you not tarry one hour? It means, will you not pause in prayer for me, for my life and the lives of the planet? Will you just pray one hour? And when he went off to pray and he came back, what did he find the disciples doing? sleeping so jesus couldn't get agreement prayer so therefore he went to the cross and died <laughs> marcy says it's a plan here's what i think god had a plan to maybe extend jesus one more year <laughs> what if that's true and all he all jesus needed was one person to agree with two because he's the one that taught it 
And he adds, Father, will you not let this cup pass from me? Right? So he was praying for an extension of his ministry, but when he came back, he had no agreement partners. Now, some people say, well, God's plans are perfect. But what if God said, okay, Jesus, bring them all in the garden. If you can get one of them to pray with you, I'll extend your ministry. What if? I'm the what if guy because I always look for loopholes. I'm looking for, you know, how much more could Jesus have accomplished? Well, maybe more. But here's the thing. What if the what if is the what if? What if one of them said, got it, and started praying with Jesus in agreement? What if? We don't know because the story went that way. We don't know. But here we are on earth. Do you need an agreement partner? Sure. Why not? Why don't you get somebody to agree with you? Why don't you get somebody to pray around the same time as you? How hard is that? Nearly impossible. I'll just be real with you. To get somebody to agree with you in prayer is nearly impossible. Especially if you say, pray for me and I pray for you. Because they're going to say, Lord, I want you to bless them financially, but not more than me. I want you, Lord, to bless them with a job, but not better than mine. But Lord, I want... (laughs) It's nearly impossible, but if you pray in the Holy Ghost, I mean, it's the best kind of prayer. Why? Because there's no human in it. There's no human. So you just pray in the Holy Ghost and you leave it to the Lord's will because the Lord will pray through the Holy Spirit into you, out your vocal cords, to the ears of Jesus, who's at the right hand of the Father, and present it to God, and God will send. It's a big circle. It just keeps going in a huge circle. Amen. Do you want to be part of the circle? You like make your own rules. Well, a lot of Christians do make their own rules. Yeah. Well, I just I know how to pray. I'm gonna pray, and then nothing happens. If you ever see a person that says, "Well, I prayed for that, and that prayer got answered just because of me," how oh, you know that you're an idiot? Shut up. Just tell them straight, you're an idiot. Shut up. Why? Because. If you're praying in English, I mean, you know that it's up to the person to receive. Amen. You can pray all you like. I pray for people every day, but I cannot pray against stupid and I cannot pray against will. Basic two rules. If they're stupid, it's gambling. Amen. <laughs> Whatever their will is, is going to happen anyway. Because a lot of people say, Pastor Bray, I'm dying and only have so much time to live. And then they die. It's it's not on me. I ain't going to feel guilty. I ain't going to lose sleep over there. I'm like, hey, you mocky that day. That's what's between you and yourself and you. Right? Because God's will is what? God wants what they want. I want what they want. I mean, it's up to the wanter. Yeah, hallelujah. You guys good at that? Prayer agreement? Can you find an agreement partner? Easy. Just say, hey, what? You, me, get them. Shoot. It's local style. Eh? How easy is that? <laughs> what? Six o'clock. Shoot. Six o'clock. Shoot. And just pray. Don't say, let's pray for 90 minutes straight. I guess somebody going to fail. Yeah. And somebody going to lie. Oh, yeah. You can pray for 90 minutes. Oh, now nah, about 13 minutes. Ah! That's more than me. Uh, some people can lie and say, yes, I did 90 minutes, but they slept for 89. They went, oh, yeah, our half went by fast. I was right in the spirit that whole time. I was out there, man. Was, oh. Amen. All right, are we good so far? All right. The notes, are we done? We had a little bit more. I think I think that was it. All right. So we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, we're going to have that done for you. So you all good with that? Yeah. How many of you want to pray with power? Yeah. I can tell you this, guys. Don't believe everybody out there that says that we all have the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. If you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have the gifts or the fruit. It comes as a result of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so there's a lot of people out there, they don't believe in tongues. Uh, the evidence is being baptized in the Holy Spirit, but they don't believe that. But 
Yet they say that we have, we have to live by the fruit of the Spirit. You can't do it. It's impossible. How are you going to do them? You're just hoping at that point. Plenty of hopers in this town. All right. So let's all stand. Amen. I want you to be power-packed. I want you to be fruitful. Um, Jesus said that you know them by their fruit. So if you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know that you're going to have good fruit. Automatic. All right. Hallelujah. All right. So why don't you migrate up to the front a little, everybody. I don't have to lay hands on you, but I'd like you to be a little more so you're not praying on your own and thinking, oh, my God, who's listening to me? All right, just come up. Just stand in front. It's, this is not prayer for healing and deliverance. This is prayer to be power-packed. Amen. Everybody has this ability. All right. This is very, very easy, okay? Very easy. We're going to do it all together as a corporate body. Come closer. Come all over. Come inside. No need to be in one line. Pick one box. <laughs> okay? This is going to be the, a big step for some of you who have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's a huge step, okay? This is something that most churches don't do. So you're going to be... And it's real simple. Just close your eyes. You don't need to stare laser beams through me. All right, so all we're going to do is we're going to pray. Uh, I'm going to just tell you to pray in a way where you receive more, okay? And the prayer is you're going to repeat after me. So let me start this prayer off, and then when I say repeat after me, you repeat. So, Father, we just come before you, and we just ask, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will come. Uh, we know, Lord, that each and every one of us loves you, and we're all saved. So that's the first requirement, that we love you and that we believe that you're for real. So, Lord, we do believe you're for real because we've seen miracles in this church, Lord, that will baffle even doctors. So we know that you're real. real. So we right now acknowledge that we are your children, that you are our Savior. Everybody say, Jesus, you're my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. So just the word says, just call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. All right. So we're going to pray this prayer. Just close your eyes. I want you to release your head. Don't even think about anything. Let me do all the praying. And I'm going to pray for you right now. All you got to do is repeat after me. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I desire a gift that you freely give and one that I can freely receive. Right now at this altar, I receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. Cleanse me with the fire of heaven. And I will pray in tongues which is the evidence of being baptized in the holy spirit holy spirit use me to pray i will pray in languages that my brain can't understand and i won't try i will just receive and i will allow you to pray through me in jesus name put your hand on somebody now and say this i impart the baptism in the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I baptize you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep your eyes closed. We're going to pray together. Everybody, all you got to do is just begin to pray and just copy me. I'm going to start it off. All you got to do is open your mouth and be courageous. Let's pray and just say this. La 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 bra sa la bra sa la 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 bra nda la ko la bra so la bra so la 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 ka la bra sa la bra ka la bra ko la bra sa. Okay, stop. All you got to do is breathe now. Lord, we thank you that you would loose this spirit, man, to pray in the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to do the same thing a little louder, a little faster. La 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 bra sa la la bra ko la bra so be courageous louder la bra sa la ra ko bra na hi ara ba sa la bra la bra ko la bra so la bra so la bra ko bra na la bra sa la bra so la bra ka hara la ba ko. Okay, stop. With praying in the Holy Ghost comes finances. How many of you need finances? How many of you need money? Yeah. How many of you need skills? Maybe these young ones want to be great athletes. That's where this comes from. Maybe some of you want to be musicians. That's where this comes from. All right. 
We're going to do the same thing again, louder and faster. Ready? Let's go. La la bra sa la bra ko horanda ba shu kuru la bra ka la bra ko la bra su la bra da la 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 bra ta la bra so la bra ko faster just let it go now let it go your own language is gonna start taking over kabro su tu rukuru na ba shete la bra yin na bra ki hala ra so la bra ko horanda ba e da la ran na bra so la bra ka la bra ka la bra ko horanda ba su to la bra ko e la bra run na ba si chu rukuru la dia. Keep going, keep going. Go ahead, go ahead. You got it, you got it. Don't let your mind play tricks. Ila brosu la bakar tu na basita la kur na bete la brosu. Louder. That person next to you, rub their back, help them along. Tell them, come on. La brun na brata la brako brosu. Everybody has it. Everybody has it. Only shame will stop you. La brosu la braka haratu na braka hala brako la braka. Ete la bra tuto bra kur na bati lo bra kur no ba shata bra kur na bla sol bra ko la bra ka e la da da la bra tanda bla kur na ba har do ba shu hira dira da le do bra ko e la bra ko take a deep breath and go again la bra sun da bra ti la bra kur na ba ka ro ko la bra sol bra ko it makes no sense to your brain so don't try iti li bra ko ro ti ba ha sha la ba ko na ba ti la bra ko Lord, I beseech thee, Lord, to explode on the inside. Out of their belly will flow rivers of living water. Lord, they will be set ablaze. All of the gifts of the Spirit, Lord, sort themselves out. They will have the gifts that you desire for them to have. And if they don't, then, Lord, they will covet earnestly the best gift that they believe they can operate in. In Jesus' name, all of the fruit of the Spirit, Lord, are theirs. They can handle it. In the last sea, korot atabashur nabaka. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Now lift your hands. In the little room, Barakala, Brasu. Lord, I baptize each and every one of them in the name of Jesus. We have already laid hands upon all of them, Lord. We thank you that as a corporate body, we can all pray. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep going. Hallelujah. Bandele Guru Tubashu. Now you can follow Pastor Jeff as he sings in the Spirit. You can sing in the Spirit as well. lovely we love you and we thank you we rejoice and we pray and we give thanks in all things in all ways and at all times in Jesus name. thank you Lord. 
Alright, start praying again, some of you. Kirunda Basi, La Brasso, La La Brasso, La 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 Randa Brasso, La Brasso, La Brasso. You should already have it solid inside it. La Brunda La Kita Basso, La Brasso. If you don't know how to start, just start off with your La La La, La La La, La La La, Toyora Honda, La Bra, La Brasso, La Brasso, La Brasso, La Brasso. Encourage the children to do it because they'll stay out of trouble. Holy Ghost will see to it. Most kids don't want to do it because of shame. Encourage them that they should. It's going to bring them a lifetime of blessing and not problems. Hallelujah. All right, open your eyes. It's all good in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Pastor Jeff, you want to add anything and pray us out and get the Ohana fun and we're all good. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you have given us the Holy Spirit. He's known as the paraclete, the one that comes beside us, keep us standing to strengthen us and when you pray in tongues you got to know that the enemy doesn't know what you're saying either but you're praying with the spirit and the spirit is, gives you the utterance of prayer so do it often it really messes the enemy up <laughs> and even if you feel like when you're worshiping sometimes the Holy Spirit gives you utterance in worship and you can be surprised what kind of music you'll sing to the Lord in that so exercise this and we give you all the glory Lord Holy Spirit come freshen in you you already have this evening you filled your people and keep filling them with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We thank you, Lord, beforehand at the power, at the glory, riches and wisdom and strength that you, Holy Spirit, will give to your people. We thank you, Lord. All right, amen. Amen. How do you guys feel? Huh?